we learned up to now in this uh, mimer, this Hasidic essay <coughs> that's written in the book Torah Or by the first Rebbe of Chabad, how to come to complete harmony with God and what God wants, and especially in what God wants in the Torah. And the Rebbe said that in order to really do this, is there has to be preceded, first of all, a lot of uh, personal work. Has to work on himself. A person has to work on themselves in order to establish a relationship with God. <clears throat> number one, love. Number two, fear. And number three, the Torah. Now, this is especially relating to the Jewish people, especially the Torah part. But the first two <coughs> are also for everybody to, to a certain degree. <clears throat> so you have to first love God and then fear God and then use God's Torah <coughs> to reveal God. Then after that, you're going to have this level of total you want to call it surrender or harmony with the creator of the universe and the will of the creator of the universe and with life and what you're supposed to do with life. This is hinted at by the first four sons of Leah, the first source, four sons born to Yaakov. <coughs> Reuven, Shimon, Levi, and Yehuda. Reuven is love. Why? Because Reuven hints at seeing God, seeing God in everything, how God creates everything, <clears throat> how God is above everything. You learn books, you start to understand that there's angels, there's all these spiritual levels, there's all these mystical, Kabbalistic <clears throat> worlds and dimension, dimensions of reality that there are, and that God is creating all this. The whole thing is, is just a big creation as real. As this world seems, the world, this world is like nothing compared to the upper worlds, right? People do anything to go to heaven. Heaven makes this world <clears throat> like nothing. It's like walking down the street and finding a $10 bill. And then all of a sudden on the other side of the street, there's there's a thousand dollars, right? So you <clears throat> you don't need the ten dollars, you run over the thousand, then all of a sudden there's somebody says, Hey, there's over there, you can get there's packages of millions of dollars, right? You leave the thousands of dollars and you, and there was the, the, the reality of the upper worlds makes this world nothing. And each upper world is an infinitely greater dimension than the one below it. Well, God is creating this whole entire business. When a person starts to feel this and he believes it, <clears throat> and he starts to comprehend it to a certain degree and internalize it, that that same God that's creating the angels and all these spiritual Kabbalistic worlds is creating me right now. And then he comes to love. Then there's fear. What's fear? Fear is that all this we said about God creating everything, that's a lower aspect of God. There's higher aspects of God that were incomprehensible. That's <clears throat> incomprehensible. And then if one second God wants to, he can turn the whole thing off. If he wants to, but he's not. So we're basically depending on the, the, the power, the infinite greatness of God. That's fear. A person comes to awe. You realize we're dealing with something really serious over here. <clears throat> then the third level is what we call the Torah. The Torah is what unites all this business together. The God who's creating the whole world, he's creating it for a purpose. And that purpose is in the Torah. So on one hand, the purpose is above the world. But on the other hand, the purpose is the world. <laughs> God's creating the world. <clears throat> here we are. We're part of this infinitely, infinitely high purpose. When a Jew learns the Torah, he actually connects this because the Torah is not just a bunch of philosophy. The Torah is exactly the words of God. Each word of the Torah is a pipeline from the creator to the creation, revealing the creator in the world. <clears throat> and each sentence even more so, and each idea even more so. So all the ideas of the Torah and all the commandments of the Torah this links the highest levels to the lowest levels. 
those three levels that we talked about, loving God, fearing God, and having uh, the, 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 the Torah, uniting all this, that's just a preparation for this third, the fourth attitude. <clears throat> the fourth, if you want to call it, level of, of reality, truth. And that is like Yehuda. Yehuda is total <clears throat> surrender, total harmony with the creator of the universe and everything that you do all the time. <clears throat> that ideally is a Jew. That's what the Jews are supposed to be. Total harmony and oneness, <clears throat> like a television picks up television waves, right? Only if it's perfectly working. The television, if it's something on its own, right? one of the tubes does whatever it wants to, you don't get the, the, the picture, not at least not clear. And so also the Jews, the Jews, every Jew is supposed to be totally surrendered to the truth, <clears throat> right? Like, a, like in an orchestra, every player in the orchestra totally is surrendered to the music. Everyone does his part, <clears throat> his or her part. <clears throat> so the Rebbe, this, is, this takes a lot of work. It's a lot easier said than done. It's not also easier said, it's not that easy to say, but as far as it, but as far as uh, doing it is much more difficult. But on the other hand, it's fun. That's what life is about, right? It's a constant challenge every moment to <clears throat> adapt our feelings to the truth. So when a person does this, <clears throat> then does this, comes to this level of Yehuda, by, by the way, this is ideally the idea of Mashiach. Mashiach is just going to be a human being like Moses, Moshe, that reveals the true ability of every single human being in the world to properly interpret and deal with challenges in life, uh, to elevate the whole world <clears throat> to true reality. Hine. So we said, oh, so he said, if you do this, then it, your, your, it says your hand is on the neck of your enemies. In other words, all of your enemies are subdued. Who are the enemies? The enemies are this whole world. If you don't take control of the world and of yourself, then the world takes control of you. If a person does not deal properly with the challenges of life and the vicissitudes of <clears throat> reality, then they take him over. He, he becomes overwhelmed. He becomes confused. So that's the idea. If you have proper love of God and proper fear of God, and you also have the proper <clears throat> attitude toward the Torah, is then that gives you the proper attitude toward the world, and you can do what you're supposed to in the short amount of time that's given to each one of us to do, or 120 years, whatever, 200, however long a person lives, to do what you're supposed to with the, with the world, to realize that every instant is precious. Every situation is an amazing, godly opportunity no matter how insignificant it seems. <clears throat> so it makes a person more happy, and therefore the world does not control him. His hand is on the neck of his enemies. The enemies is the world. That's the thing of the physical world. So eventually, Mashiach, it says that all mankind will <clears throat> bow, if you want to call it, to the Mashiach. All mankind will have to learn and be subservient to the Mashiach because he's going to teach everybody how to be, really be a human being. Ah, but Ikaragoram, the main thing, <clears throat> got our pointer, we have to have our red pointer over here. Ah, Ikaragoram, the call on Milos, Bechinazu, that Yehuda Ata, to be this level of Yehuda, total harmony, total surrender, totally being in tune with the creator of the world and your purpose in this creation. Bagoram, Liot yodcha, yoducha achecha, and the, the, that which ca will cause your brothers to all bow down to you. Al zen neamar it says viyistachabu lepachei bnei avicha, they will bow down to you, the sons of your father. Kihine because behold, hishtachavu this bowing down. Who bechinas hamshacha? What does it mean bowing down? Bowing down means drawing down, drawing down. <coughs> Okay, here's, the, in, in Judaism, you're supposed to say a hundred blessings every day. Huh? Did you know that? 
In Judaism, you're supposed to say 100 blessings every day. 100 blessings a day. A lot of those blessings are in the prayers that we say. For instance, we say the Shemona Esrei prayer, the standing prayer. We say it three times a day. In each one of those, there's 19 blessings. <clears throat> so that's already like, you know, 60 or 57. So that's already the majority. And then there's, there's blessings you say in the morning when you wake up. That's another 15, 17 blessings in the morning. So we're already up to 70 something, four. So we don't have that many to go. Then there's the blessings you say before you eat. The, the way you wash, on washing your hands, on bread, the blessings after you eat. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> then there are blessings in the course of the day. You want to eat an apple. You have the blessing after the apple, etc. There's places where it's listed. In Kitsa Shokhan it's listed. <clears throat> the point I'm trying to make is you're supposed to say 100 blessings a day. What is this idea of making a blessing? So the simple meaning of a blessing is you're thanking God. right? But that's not blessing. The word blessing doesn't mean just to think. Boruch is not the same thing as hoda. idea of a blessing is that you, you pull down godliness. You draw down godliness. <clears throat> the spiritual is, so to speak, above the physical. Right? Is, is above the physical. <clears throat> and God is, so to speak, above all that, even though it's really not physically above. <clears throat> it's just a, a, a higher dimension. But it's the same thing, like you say, higher mathematics, lower mathematics, it's really not higher physically, it's, but it's, it's greater and it encompasses more. So the idea of making a blessing is to draw down from this God a higher awareness of reality, a higher level of reality into our reality. That's what a blessing is. That's why you're supposed to say 100 blessings every day. That's the same thing as bowing down. And so it says... That the main thing to all of this, of loving God, fearing God, <clears throat> using the Torah, being surrendered to God, the main cause of this is what it says, that your the sons of your father bow down to you. <clears throat> what does that mean? We'll see. This is also the idea of hishtachavah b'shmon esrei. This is the idea of we bow down. In the Shimon Esri, you're supposed to bow down four times, right? Modi Manach Dulach, and etc. And then before you, in the beginning of, of Shimon Esri, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokei Avraham. And then we get three times, <clears throat> three, four times you bow down. These bowing downs that we bow down, you just bend your, <clears throat> your, your, from your waist. You bend your waist, you bend, you bend your head down, like to your waist. This is called Amshacha. Bechinus Avicha, this level, what does it mean? The sons of your father will bow down, namely, Bechinus Karachem Ab Albanim. Avicha means mercy. <coughs> God is called a merciful father. This mercy that we have in our personality and our, how do you say, in our <coughs> bag of tricks is av, the mercy is from the level of what's called father. And what comes from this mercy that we have on our soul? Charity and kindness. Lachayos ruch shfeilim, to enliven those people who are unfortunate. Shekala ose chesed, that anyone who does kindness, b'midas arachamim, in a way of mercy, to have mercy on poor people, the atomim, or orphans, or sick people, or <clears throat> troubled people, lonely people. This comes from the sons, and others, the offspring of your father. Your father is mercy. This is the offspring, this is the results of your father of mercy. So that's what it means. We'll bow down to you, the sons, and it was the deeds that come from Avicha, your father, for mercy. Doing deeds of kindness. 
This is what draws down Ishtachavah. This is what draws down godliness. It draws down inspiration to you. It draws down awareness of the truth. Another thing, when it says your father, your fa our father represents mercy, we said, but also your father is also the Torah. Because the Torah also comes from this level which is called father, Chachma. <coughs> <coughs> This is the, also the level of father. <clears throat> like it says, Listen, my son, the teachings of your father. That's the written Torah. In this case, if the, we said that the Torah is mercy, the sons of your father are good deeds. Now we're saying father is the Torah. The sons of your father, these are the people who learn the Torah, <clears throat> that also has an especial, especially good effect on the world. <clears throat> That's what it means, Vishtacha will bow down to you, and it will be drawn down to you, the sons of your father. B'nei these are the person, people who learn Torah, and those who do acts of kindness. Heim, heim, these are what draws down. Yishtacha means to bow down, to draw down to you, <clears throat> to be near to Chilas on the sofa, that the end is found in the beginning. The physical good deeds that you do in this world and the actual physical Torah that you learn in this world, the Torah and the Gemilas Chasadim that you learn in this world, this reaches the highest essence levels of God. This gives you power in your soul, the aurora to arouse this love and fear we talked about before, which was hinted at by Ruvain. And Shimon, until it comes down to this level of Hoda, <clears throat> a gratitude, surrender, and being in harmony with the creator of the universe. And that's, so to speak, the goal. By means of this, there will be your brothers will be. <clears throat> connected to you. That'll be Yehuda Ata. <clears throat> That's the whole idea of Yehuda, to give, be aware and to give thanks and be grateful <clears throat> and to be subservient and harmonious with the creator of the universe. Huh? To do what you're supposed to do. That's pretty good. <clears throat> that you can be the representative of the king of the whole world. Now, that's That's really amazing. That makes you superior to everybody else until you find out that everybody else is also the representative of the creator of the universe. So that makes them superior to you because they are servants of the creator in a different way than you are. Everybody has a different job. <clears throat> so every, that's what it says. Who is a wise person? Someone who learns from everyone. So everyone is superior to everyone else. Everyone has something unique that nobody else has. On the other hand, everyone is inferior to everyone else in the world because everyone is lacking all the things that everybody else has. Because all they all, everyone else also has unique things. <clears throat> and who created this whole amazing harmony and, and, and be beauty? That's God. God is creating all of it all the time, constantly. <clears throat> so to be harmonious with God and to be connected to God, that really activates your uniqueness. That brings a tremendous love of God, a tremendous awe of the Creator, a tremendous awe of the Torah, and a tremendous desire to help everyone in the world that you can, however you can. <clears throat> That's ideally what the world is about. Okay, so then now that's what we learned in the first mimer. Who would ever dream that that was <clears throat> what's implied by these historical facts that Yaakov, Jacob had four sons from Leah and their names were Yehuda and Ruvain and this. Who would, then it was such an, an important and, and demanding thing from us. <clears throat> it's so personal. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Let's go further. That one, that one came out okay. Let, let's let's <clears throat> do it again. Here we go. 
right? One of the blessings <clears throat> to Yehuda, we're going to learn this today, by the way, in the Chumash class, come to the Chumash class, three o'clock, that <clears throat> Jacob, before he dies, he gives blessings to all of his sons. And the blessings that he gave to uh, the first three sons weren't so good. It was more like of a, re a reproof than a blessing. <clears throat> Ruvain and Shimon and Levi, he really sort of told them off. And it, it, he cursed their anger, he cursed their bad character traits, <clears throat> and etc. But then when it came to Yehuda, he started saying really good things because Yehuda is going to be the idea of Mashiach. And, and he says that almost explicitly, almost. He says, Lo Yesu Shevet Yehuda. <clears throat> Shilo. He said that Yehuda, from the family of Yehuda, are always going to be the leaders of the Jewish people <clears throat> from the beginning, from the first temple, in the time of exile, <clears throat> even in the time of uh, right now, right? You have the, the, all the Lubavitcher Rebbe's and all the 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 the, uh, <clears throat> the, um, the great leaders always came from their other, their other, other great leaders also. But the, the, the main leaders of the Jewish people have always come from the tribe of Judah, Yehuda. And Mashiach, of course, is going to come from Yehuda. That's King, that's David. <clears throat> so one of the blessings that he gives over there to Yehuda doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything Jewish. I mean, it's just that's a nice blessing, but it's not a that he's going to have a lot of wine. Every tribe, every every uh, of the 12 tribes. And they all got a portion in Israel, also a portion in Israel. It says that Levi didn't give an, get an official portion, but he got the, he got the cities, 48 cities that the, the, for the Levi's, Levites said, and everybody was supposed to give the Levites charity because the Levites didn't officially work. Their thing was just the learning Torah and teaching. <clears throat> But there were 12 tribes. Uh, Yosef was divided into two, so in, in Menashe and Ephraim. But in any case, the, in the portion of Judah, Yehuda, which that's, Yehuda is the Mashiach, huh? he's going to be the king. So he gives a blessing. You're going to have a lot of wine. There's going to be a lot of wine over there, a lot of grapes and a lot of wine. Uh, that's what you really want, right? Who, who cares about wine? You want wine, you go to the store and you buy wine. What, that's the big blessing for the Mashiach. He's going to have a lot of wine. But it's written in the Bible. And who wrote the Bible? God. <clears throat> God wrote the Bible. So this must be pretty <clears throat> important. This must be pretty important. There's a lot of people that don't like wine. That doesn't make any difference. This is Mashiach. He's going to have a lot of wine. That's what we've been waiting for. All this we've been suffering for these 2,000 years to get a bunch of wine. That's, that's pretty disappointing. So the Rebbe is going to explain that, <clears throat> like everything else in the Torah, there's a simple meaning, and there's deeper meanings, and then to put like a little bit of Jewish flavor into all these different levels of meaning, there's chassidut. That, by the way, we learn once a week. Anyone who's interested, we learn once a week. There's a, in Germany, there's somebody, somebody a couple people that we learn with them once a week. You can look at the past classes that we have. It's called Essence of Hasidut. <clears throat> okay, ready? Asri legefen iro. Ulasreka bene asono. He will tie to the vine, the grapevine, his donkey. Ulasreka and to one branch of it, bene atono, his baby donkey. Kibes biyayan he will wash in wine his garments. And with the blood and the juice of, of grapes, as suso. Suso is another type of a garment. Rashi says there's no example like that in the Torah, his garments. So he's going to tie up his, his, um, his donkey and his little donkey to the wine, <coughs> to the grape vines. And, the, and the Rashi explains that there are going to be so many grapes that each donkey is going to be filled with just one, you know, one vine, and that the, every baby donkey will be filled with one branch of, of, of grapes. And he'll wash his garments in wine, 
and from the blood of grapes, which is also wine, to watches, also other type of garments as well. <clears throat> okay, what's this talking about? Wine with grapes, with donkeys, with garments. What's what is talk? What's going on over here? <clears throat> Says the Rebbe, Hine Mikrazu. This sentence. Neymar is talking about Leomoto Mashiach for the days of the Mashiach. Shekai, that it refers on the sentence right before it, Lo Yisur Shevet Mi Yehuda, the, the scepter of rulership will not depart from Judah. Ad Kiyavo Shiloh, until Shiloh comes, and Shiloh is a, another name for the Mashiach. The rulership that the rulership is his, Shiloh. And to him, all nations will gather. So it says, Mashiach will come. All the nations in the world will gather to the Mashiach. They'll all do the seven Noahide commandments. All mankind will be connected to God. We want to do what God wants. God is creating everybody, right? So everyone will connect to their creator, and everyone will be Happy, wonderful. And then the final thing it's going to be is Asri <clears throat> Lugafaniro will tie his donkey to the grapevine and he'll wash his garments in wine. That's it. <clears throat> okay, let's explain this. Obirinian explanation is he neom rezal. Some people, the, the rabbis say, there's no difference between this world, how it is now. This terrible, frustrating, confusing world, how it is now, to the days of the Mashiach, El Shibud Bilvad, except for the rulership of the nations over the Jews. But the Rebbe explains this, that's the first stage. But nevertheless, that is what the rabbis say. <clears throat> the, the big difference between now when or the time of exile, when the Jews are under the non-Jews and the Gentiles force the Jews to do or disturb the Jews from serving God, they torture, they move them around, they take their property, whatever. <clears throat> That's going to stop. Mashiach is going to stop all that. The Jews are going to be autonomous to do what God wants. Huh? Pretty good. I mean, pretty much that's the way it is now, right? I mean, every every place in the world you can learn Torah, even in Iran or whatever. <clears throat> you can learn Torah. Kiyamota <clears throat> Mashiach, because the, these days of the Mashiach, this is not what we call the world to come. Olam Abba, the true idea of the world to come, this is after a tria, after the dead raise up. This is what's called the reward for the righteous. And everybody's going to be righteous. They're all raised up in the dead. But that's, a, that's the final stage, this thing of the raising of the dead. The days of the Mashiach is the beginning Hayom Lasotam. The days of the Mashiach is now. <clears throat> we have to <clears throat> do Torah and the commandments without receiving any reward. <clears throat> so what's Mashiach going to do? First stages of Mashiach, the, end, the final stages of Mashiach is he's going to raise the dead. But the first stages of Mashiach is that what? He's just going to set, and he say, fix everybody's mind. <clears throat> I'm going to make everybody normal. Jews will act like Jews. Gentiles will act like the creators, creations of God, the choice creations of God. Every human being will feel special. All the Jews will learn Torah. All the Jews will do the commandments. All the non-Jews will drop all their false religions and worship only the creator of the universe. And life will go on regular, that's all. Life will go on regular. The creator of the universe wants there to be a universe. He wants us to work, wants us to have families, wants us to have countries. You gotta have armies, you can have whatever you want, right? <clears throat> there won't be any wars, there won't be any sickness eventually, but there'll still be doctors, there'll still be, the Rebbe once said, there'll have to be doctors to tell people that they aren't sick. People, it'll be hard to believe. 
<clears throat> armies can be there in order to help build cities, in order to help people, whatever. And in other words, now Mashiach is going to come and he's just going to set everybody's heads properly. People won't be interested in receiving rewards. That's one of the big sicknesses of our generation and the main sickness of all the religions in the world, <clears throat> that you, you do the religion in order to receive a reward. Right? If you do the reward, you believe in this guy, you believe in this, you'll be saved, you'll be if you don't believe you're going to burn in hell, that's sick. That is very, very sick. Mashiach will come and make the world that people won't think about these rewards anymore. They'll just think about doing good because they owe it to God. They owe it to the Creator. God is giving us everything for free. At least do something for Him for free. <clears throat> the Ikar Ayom, La Sotom, the main thing of doing it today and the purpose of this completion of D will be in the days of the Mashiach where no one will be selfish and everyone will do the truth because it's true. And everyone will express their <clears throat> potential, their God-given potential, what God gives everybody potential. And when everybody realizes this potential, then the world will be a beautiful, harmonious, happy place. The more people, the better. Huh? Everybody is different. You'll be happy. To, a person, a human being, I'm meeting a person. This is amazing, right? There's no, there's the more, you know, there's oh, yeah, another person. Gee, yeah, I'm not meeting another person. This is a big holiday. I don't believe, I, look, there's another person. You know how many people there are in the world? I don't know. I mean, there must be like 20, 30. That's just amazing. There's millions. Wow. That's the happiest thing in the world. Millions of people in the world. Billions. Billions, tens of billions of people in the world. The more people there are, the more happy, the more diversity there is the more harmony there is. <clears throat> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's what's going to be in the days of the Mashiach. Well, come on, where does everybody get, get food from? In Judaism, there's a saying, the one who gives the teeth, he gives the bread. How did you get teeth in your mouth? How did you get it there? It's a miracle. God does miracles. He provides food. It was prized food, not like all these negative people that say there's too many people in the world and they're, they're overpopulated and there's not going to be food. That's the way the world is without God. But without God, there's no people either. <laughs> God creates all the people. The same God that creates people and people have needs. <clears throat> but when as soon as a person is created, which that's a big miracle, but that happens automatically. Now you're created, you have will, free will. You weren't created because of your free will. Now you have a free now everything depends on how you use your free will. A person who uses his free will properly as he makes it possible for everyone else to receive miracles. That's the way the world goes, <clears throat> according to Judaism. <laughs> Just like the main thing was man. Man was created and put into Gan Eden. <clears throat> Gan Eden was heaven and earth. What did he do? What was he supposed to do there? <laughs> man, the first man, Adam, was put into the world in order to work on it and to preserve it. La'avda, this is the positive commandments. La'shamah, this is the negative commandments. In other words, there are things that he had to, yes, do, and things that he had to avoid doing, which we see that only a couple hours after he was created, he messed up both of them. az hayom la'sotam. When man was created, put into the world, that was, it was like the days of the Mashiach. It's like the days of the Mashiach. The only thing he had to do was just one thing. Don't be selfish. Do believe in God. One thing. Believe in God. Don't be selfish. And he couldn't do it. And we've been suffering from that selfishness to this very, very day. All the religions in the world come from selfishness. That's why when Mashiach comes, all the religions will be dropped. There won't be any more religions. Because there won't be any more selfishness. People won't be all egotistical all the time. They'll use their egos in order to help others, to help to do what God wants. Okay. But afterwards, afterwards, man got evicted from heaven, heaven on earth. Afterwards, afterwards came our forefathers into the land of Israel, into the land of Egypt. And then after that, they came into the land of Israel. Also, in order to do my submits was the commandments. Shekhamo kama mitzvahs, that many commandments depend on the land of Israel. Davka. Here Israel means the land of Israel, right? Eretz means it. <clears throat> many commandments. That's why Mashiach is going to draw the Jews back to Israel. Why? 
Why can't they just be woken up and wherever they are? It says they're drawn because the, there's commandments that can only be done in Israel. And the whole, because Mashiach will cause that people won't be selfish anymore. They won't be egotistical. Right? And they'll style out their selves, their, their uniqueness. When a person is selfish, he looks like everybody else. When a person is selfish, he he he, can, he destroys other people's selfishness. He's jealous. He can't stand that he hates people. But when a person is not jealous, right? Or a person is not egotistical, so he's not jealous and he's not that, that destructive. And that. So the idea is when, when people are not egotistical, they want to do what God wants. And the only way that a Jew can really do what God wants totally is in the land of Israel. Because there's a lot of commandments that you can't do outside of Israel, the agricultural laws. Then there's going to be the Holy Temple. Mashiach is going to build the Holy Temple. And the Holy Temple is one thing that's going to draw the Jews back to want to do the commandments. <clears throat> it says almost four-fifths of the commandments can only really be done in the land of Israel. The Akakak and afterwards, Galo Moshe, afterwards, Galo Misham, afterwards, the Jewish people were evicted from there. Second temple. <clears throat> That's been almost 2,000 years ago. Fanulit Kaim will be Adam, and this ability to do what really what God wants won't be until the days of the Mashiach, Sheyeh, Bemheira, that it'll come hurriedly, soon, now, in our days. Sha'az then, Yeh, Bebechin, is Yom, Yasosam, then will be the ability to serve God totally. Hine, Anu, Omrim, we say, Besham, Nasel, Afenecha, Bekorbanos, Echavoteinu. We say in the Musaf prayer, and the Shabbat, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, the Yom Tov, and the holidays, we say in one of our prayers, God, please take us to the land of Israel, build the third temple. <clears throat> we'll go to Israel, and then we will be able to make the sacrifices like we want. Commits Vesuvah in the way that you want. Ikara Misa, the main service of God, is the sacrifices. That's what we're really missing now, what we really should be longing for to do the sacrifices, right? I mean, is there, can you think of anything more? bizarre and and primitive than the sacrifices taking an animal and killing that's judaism that's judaism and we're talking about all these high beautiful philosophical spiritual mystical ideas of godliness and purity and levels of consciousness and awareness and being above the world the creator of the world and what's what's the whole goal? What with it? So we can take a cow and kill it and spill the blood out and then burn it up, and some parts are eaten up. That that's the whole point. So the answer is is that's exactly the point, because this seems so crazy, insane. I mean, an animal is so low; it's such a low thing, right? It doesn't have much intelligence, and it just wanders around. It's just just you know pure beast. That you're serving God. To be able to serve God with an animal, the lowest things in the world, and also the lowest parts of our personality, the animal part inside of us, and how it's in, embodied in the animal that's outside, this cow or the sheep, to use that to serve God, that is just, it doesn't make, it's insane. And that's exactly what God wants. It's called shtut kedusha, insanity of holiness to do exactly what God wants, things that are totally against our understanding. And there's nothing like that. The service of the sacrifices. In addition, there's all this other meaning which is behind it. <clears throat> the energy that's released and the energy that's elevated. But nowadays we cannot, when we're in exile, we can't make the sacrifices. We don't even understand why we should make the sacrifices. But nowadays, what do we have in the place of the sacrifices? We have prayer. Prayer nowadays is in the place of the sacrifices. <clears throat> prayer is supposed to be Jewish prayer. It's supposed to be the service of the heart. It's supposed to be the service of the heart. Like we learned in the previous Mimer, love, fear, faith. That's what prayer is. That's what the Holy Temple was supposed to be. Love, fear, and faith of the Creator. So nowadays we have prayer, and prayer arouses our hearts. 
That's what Adam <clears throat> messed up in Gan Eden. That his heart was in the wrong place. His heart was connected to himself. Now we have to connect our hearts back to where Adam's heart should have been. Namely to the creator of the universe that is creating us. To think, contemplate about the greatness of God. Come to love. Come to fear. Have awe. Have faith in God. That's prayer. So prayer in a way is much better. Nevertheless, a dying ends and commences. That's not exactly. The prayers are wonderful. <clears throat> but it's not exactly what God wants. God wants the animal sacrifices. Says the Rebbe, the obvious question. <clears throat> the Lichiora, tefillah, prayer is much higher than the sacrifices. Prayer is something in our soul. It's very intimate, very personal of a person when he talks about the praises of God and he says, reminds himself that God is creating the world until he comes to loving God with all of his heart, which is not the case, sacrifices. Sacrifices, it's not even us. You take an animal <clears throat> and you put it on the altar. It's the most impersonal thing in the world. It even seems to be a bit barbaric. I mean, cruel. I mean, I did a sin, so I have to kill an animal. I want to give thanks to God. So therefore, I, I kill a sheep and I put... It's just, Obiyom Shabbat, you take two sheeps. Why are the sacrifices higher than... Why are the sacrifices higher than prayer? That that's called commitment. This is called the commandment that God really wants. And this is the ultimate purpose in the days of the Mashiach, more than to feel a now in exile. To answer this really good question, <clears throat> stay in tune tomorrow. Why are the sacrifices, which seems to be very impersonal and cold, <clears throat> more desirous to God than our prayers which are warm and personal to God. Why does God like the sacrifices more? And why is this going to be the goal of Mashiach, that we're going to be able to do the sacrifices again? This we're going to talk about God willing tomorrow. Now let's do the yom yom. <clears throat> Man's life is dependent on the air around him. Without air, you can't live. And the quality of life is dependent on the quality of air. If you live in a place where the air is polluted, and an atmosphere where there's, now let's talk about spiritual air, and an atmosphere where there's Torah and commandments, there's healthy spiritual life. In a godless environment, life is diseased. I think he spelled this wrong. Okay. And one is constantly is constantly threatened with the proper possibility of being stricken with some sort of malady, some sort of contagious thing. The first step in healing is to purify the air. Purify the air. Make the air filled with Torah and prayer. How do we do this? This is the task of every Jew that has any connection to Torah and the, 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 with the Torah and Torah literature. And it's affected by saying letters of the words of Torah. When you say the words and letters of Torah <clears throat> while you're in the store, while you're walking through the street, while you're riding in the subway, you clean the air. Of course, you don't have to scream out. You just say it quietly to yourself. Everyone knowledgeable in Torah must have some Torah memorized. Chumash, Tilim, Mishnah, Tanya, something, so that in all times, in all places, you can think and say the letters of the Torah. This purifies the air and makes the world a healthy place. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, three o'clock, we'll continue the blessings that Yaakov gave to his sons. Today, we'll finish the blessings that he gave to Yehuda, Judah. <clears throat> We're still interested in this thing about the wine. What's going on with wine and this? We'll talk about that, God willing. Uh-uh. <clears throat>